and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would show you what a typical day in the studio looks like for me. If you're new to my channel then hello I'm Claire and I'm a full-time artist based in the Yarra Valley in Melbourne. I paint mostly abstract landscapes however today a little bit later on I'm going to be painting something a bit different. Well different for me anyway but I'll talk about that a bit later. Because I mostly work with acrylic, there is not a lot of setting up to do. The beauty of having a dedicated art studio is that you can just leave everything set up from the previous day and pick up where you left off. So today I'm actually starting two new artworks because I've only just re returned recently to regular studio time after the school and Christmas holidays. I have two kids that are back at school this year. My oldest has now finished, so I don't have to worry about him, but the other two are back. So now that they're back, it means I can return to work as well. So over the Christmas New Year's break, I sold most of the artworks that were in my studio, which was fantastic, uh, but it means it's looking a little bit bare and empty. So I need to start building up my stock again. The artworks that I'm working on today are going to be added to my website eventually. and. I'm kind of just painting whatever I feel like painting today. In the time leading up to Christmas, I was working on a lot of commissions. Although I enjoy the challenge of commission work, they can sometimes be a bit draining on my creative creativity because I'm working with someone else's plan and even just working with um, someone else's idea of what colours they want. And it's usually copies of older paintings that I have also already done. So it it can be you know a little bit repetitive so it's nice to be able to just spend some time painting for the fun of it and making something that's new and not necessarily going anywhere in particular most of my abstract landscapes begin the same way i start with an abstract layer of color and i build up um, those colors and negative space and patterns as i go along I don't have a plan or specific idea in mind before I begin. I just play around with colour and mark making and let it progress on its own. I decided that I wanted to have a lot of blue tones in these artworks, so I laid down a base of blues and green colours. And I know you're going to ask, so if you want to know more about the paint brands that I use, head over to my profile because I have another video where I talk in detail about which acrylic paints I prefer to work with. Just to recap, for the sake of this video, I'm using mostly Matisse Heavy Body and also some Golden Acrylic. I don't use any special mediums in my paint, I prefer to just use water. Uh, occasionally when I do work with the liquid acrylics, such as the Golden Acrylic, in this case that dark blue that I put on earlier is the Golden Acrylic, um, because it's already a liquid acrylic, I don't need to add as much water to those, so a little bit of a spritz with a spray bottle is enough to sort of keep the drips rolling and moving around the canvas. I work really intuitively and I let the marks and textures of the different layers help me decide what to do next and where to add interest. I start out really bold and expressive and also as all the layers build I start to add more details which you will see later on. I spend a lot of time making sure each layer is totally dry before I begin the next. To speed up drying, I use a hairdryer. I've cut out those bits though because, as they say, it's not fun to watch paint dry. It's usually the point where I add in some negative space, like what I'm doing with the white, where the composition starts to come together. Once I block in these tree shapes, I can get an overall idea of where everything is going to sit within the painting and from there on I can start building up layers of colour and detail and finalising where everything is going to go. I usually listen to a lot of music while I paint, however today it's really wet. Melbourne is being its typical self and showering. Um, <laughs> uh, just because it's summer doesn't mean that it can't rain all day, especially if you live in Melbourne. So I was enjoying listening to the rain on the roof instead of music. I also usually let my mind wander a bit while I'm painting this style of abstract landscape. It's a good time for me to process the hundreds of things in my head because I don't really have to concentrate too much during these early stages of painting. Because these two pieces are being painted at the same time, there's obviously going to be a lot of similarities. 
They might end up being a diptych. However, when I create these paintings together like this, I usually sell them separately so that there's the option for them to go to different homes. I see them more like sisters rather than twins. So I'm not trying to make them look identical or the same, but naturally because I'm using similar colors and I'm painting them next to each other, there's gonna be a lot of similarities. I sort of just add in, you know, bits and pieces on one. And then while that's drying, I'll then move over and add some different pieces um, to the other one. And then I'll go back to the other painting and switch back and forth. I mentioned earlier that I was going to be working on something a bit different today, and this is it. Over the Christmas break, I gave myself the challenge of working on building up my portrait and figure painting skills. And I've also begun to use oil paint again. I have used oil paint in the past. Um, however, I moved on to acrylic, mostly because of the loose and expressive way I wanted to paint. I couldn't really deal with that um, with the long drying time of oil paint. So that was the main reason why I switched over to acrylics. But many years ago, I was actually using mostly oil paint. I really enjoyed pushing and challenging myself and I've progressed to painting some larger complete artworks in oil paint. And this is one that I'm working on at the moment. Portraits tend to lend themselves to a more slow and methodical approach. So I've pulled out the oils again and I really enjoy using them. I begin by mixing my base skin tones because today I'm blocking in the initial layers of skin tones for my surreal painting. I just sort of make it easier on myself by just making up a large amount of that base skin tone that I can then tint and change depending on what I want. I painted in the background slash underpainting with acrylic a few days ago and I'm now working on adding in the layers of oil on top. I'm still working out what I'm doing so I already realized that I made a few mistakes. Firstly, I'm not used to working with transparent point paints like oil so I realized after I started painting the face that I should have probably blocked in the background of the figure in white because the background is showing through a fair bit. <laughs> Now, I understand that this is just the first layer of paint and once I build up the lights and darks, um, it will cover it much better and eventually you won't be able to see the background. But I feel like a light background would have saved me a few layers of paint. I'm also challenging myself a lot with the lighting. Eventually, as this artwork progresses, I'll be bringing in more of a sunlit backlighting effect. So at the moment, the skin tones are quite orange, but eventually it will make a lot more sense because the light will be coming from behind and a lot of the orange from her dress will be reflecting in her face. So I have quite a few artists that I follow on Instagram and YouTube and through watching them, I've discovered and purchased the oil medium Liquin, which helps to smooth the oil paint, but it also increases the drying time, which means that instead of waiting a few weeks for the paint to dry, Instead, it's touch dry in as little as 24 hours, depending on how thickly you paint. This has been an amazing discovery for me because I'm a very impatient artist. And one of the main reasons I have always avoided oil paint is the long drying time. Now, obviously this style of surreal storytelling artwork is quite different to my normal abstract landscapes, but I've decided that 2021 is going to be the year of me creating what my heart tells me to create instead of just producing what I know is going to sell. And being a full-time artist that relies on sales to make a living, it can be really easy to become stagnant and bored with your work because you're always focused on the dollar. You're always worried, you know, I have to make this because that's what's going to sell and you're questioning yourself, you know, are my fans going to like this? Will it sell? So while these things are important, it's more important for me to feel fulfilled and not keep myself in the box that I've created for myself. So while I still will be producing plenty of my regular artworks, I will make sure that I give myself time to create just for me. And right now, this is what is bringing my heart joy. <laughs> So throughout the day, I continued to work on two completely different artworks and it was awesome.
On the abstract landscape, I started to add in some small pops of color, such as purple and also some warm pink to contrast against all of the blue. Because although I started out with these layers of blue, I don't want it to be overwhelmingly blue. So I sort of start adding in areas of color and interest and pattern. Uh, these layers of color and pattern are what brings to life and movement to the landscapes. And I love experimenting with patterns and foliage shapes. By dipping my brush in the water and also once again using the spray bottle with just regular water in it, I can encourage the paint to drip and move down the canvas. Uh, I really enjoy the randomness that this sort of creates in my paintings. And so I do use this quite a lot as a technique. I find that it helps to sort of break up the, um, sometimes, sometimes it gets a little bit forced and a little bit stiff I guess and so this kind of adds a bit of randomness and spontaneity into it. I also often get asked if I use stamps or stencils to get all the folded shapes and as you see no I don't. <laughs> Everything is painted by hand. It is very tedious and repetitive but I actually really really love doing this because as I mentioned earlier this is when I get to sort of zone out and concentrate on you know whatever else is in my head process all the things that I'm thinking of a lot of the time it has nothing to do with what I'm painting um it, it's kind of you know therapy I guess and yeah I, I really enjoy doing this part this is actually probably one of my favorite parts of the whole landscape painting process it's adding in these details and these marks and patterns on top of the underlying base colors so while those layers were drying um I started to lay down the dress of the figure. I couldn't really show you too much of me actually painting the face because I forgot to print my reference image. So I had to look at it on my phone, which meant that I couldn't also film myself at the same time because I was using my phone to film this video. <laughs> so next time <laughs> I will try and remember to print my reference photo out. But I've blocked in the shapes of the face. Uh, I will need to make a few slight alterations and changes during the next painting session. I've also blocked in the orange of the dress. Uh, you, can't, you can't really see the full composition yet, but there are actually large goldfish floating around the figure that will also be the gold orange in colour, which will contrast really nicely with all the blue of the water and the stormy sunset that's in the background. So by the end of the day, this is where I was with the abstract artwork. I will finish these off when I return next week. I'm actually flying out on Sunday to go down to Tasmania to teach a week-long art retreat workshop. So I won't get back into the studio until I get back from that. So I really add, love the pinks that I've added in here and the pops of orange. And I think it's starting to look really interesting. And I can't wait to come back and finish it off when I return next week. And I have also gotten to this stage with the portrait. The first skin tones and dress layers are down. You can see what I mean when I said earlier that the color is very transparent still, um, but I will correct this as I go. I want her to look like she's in the landscape, not a ghost. Um, although that's an interesting idea on its own. Maybe I should explore that. <laughs> uh, eventually I'll be going over the background details in oil as well. So this will probably take me several weeks and I have already accepted that it will be a slow burn artwork, not one of my super fast artworks that I finish, you know, in a day. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Um, leave a comment below if you have any questions and remember to hit the like and subscribe button and I will look forward to seeing you next time.